David lives in a small town. His vacation with his cousins in the city will soon be over. In a few days, he'll have to go back home. Jack and Margaret were fun to be with. David had never been in a big city before. He has seen wonderful things on his first visit to the city. In their apartment, David's cousins have a book he especially likes. It's a dictionary. During his vacation, David enjoyed learning the meanings of many words. And seeing the pictures, too. Some are of the things he saw in the city, like skyscrapers and a zebra in the zoo. This dictionary helps David remember what a wonderful time he's had. Someone's just made a suggestion. It's Uncle Charlie. Since David is interested in dictionaries, why couldn't the children make a dictionary of some of the things David saw in the city? The dictionary would help him remember his visit. That's a great idea. David's city dictionary can be like the dictionary his cousins own. It will list words. For every word, there will be a definition. A definition tells what a word means. There will also be a sentence with the word in it. For some of the words, there will be pictures. The words will be arranged alphabetically. First, the words that begin with A. Then the words that begin with B, and so on. Making a city dictionary for David is going to be fun. First, they have to choose words for the dictionary. They'll write each word on a separate card. That will make it easy for them to arrange the words in alphabetical order before they write them in the dictionary. What words will help Jack tell about David's visit? David knows what he would like to remember. Parade. Beach. Amusement park. David is thinking of many words. Margaret also has been writing words about the city. Baseball game. Zoo. Museum. Jack can think of many words, too. Subway. Helicopter. Crane. They've written all the words they can think of about David's visit to the city. Now, they would like Uncle Charlie to check the spelling for them. It's later. Now the children are arranging the words alphabetically. In each pile, the words begin with the same letter. Here are the words that start with A. The words that start with B, and so on. Only the first letter is important to make the piles, but this is just the first step in alphabetizing. Now they look at the second letter to arrange the words in each pile. Let's see how Margaret does it with words that start with A. In alligator, the second letter is L. In airplane, the second letter is I. 
I comes before L. Airplane is before alligator. In aquarium, the Q is the second letter. Does AQ come after AI? Yes. Does AQ come after AL? Yes. Aquarium was in the right place. Amusement park. M is the second letter in amusement. AM comes after AI and AL, but AM comes before AQ. Amusement park goes between alligator and aquarium. Ambulance is the next word. The second letter is M, but the second letter in amusement park is also M. Since the first and second letters are the same, Margaret looks at the third letters. The third letter of ambulance is B. The third letter of amusement park is U. AMB comes before AMU. Ape. Margaret knows exactly where it goes. AP goes after AM before AQ. In the same way, the words in each of the piles will be arranged in alphabetical order. Now, the words are arranged alphabetically, and they can begin writing the dictionary. Margaret is doing the A words. An alphabet tab will show where the A section begins. She will write definitions for all the words that start with A. Remember the first word in the A pile? It was airplane. Margaret will write the definition, what the word airplane means. What is an airplane? A machine for carrying people and things through the air. They help each other write the sentences that go with the definitions. Some airplanes have propellers. Some airplanes have jets. Remember, this dictionary has pictures. This picture of a bus that Jack is drawing will go beside the word bus in the dictionary. The picture of a clown David is cutting out will go with the definition of the word clown. But there's more to a dictionary than just pictures and definitions. When Margaret finishes a page, she prints on the top the first and last words that have definitions on that page. These are guide words, which make it easier to tell what is on the whole page without reading every word. For instance, on this page, ant is the first word that's defined. So Margaret has put ant at the top on the left. And on the right, she has put atom. That's because atom is the last word that has a definition on this page. What's wrong? Why isn't anyone writing? Jack and David can't decide how to write what this word means. Crane. Jack says that he meant the machine they saw lifting heavy loads at the skyscraper that was being built. But David would like his dictionary to include the large bird called a crane that he saw at the zoo. Margaret has the solution. Since a crane is a large water bird, and it is also a machine for lifting heavy things, David can write two definitions for crane. He numbers the first definition one, a large water bird. He numbers the second definition two, a machine for lifting heavy loads. And so they work on the words of David's city dictionary. This will be the cover. Now David's city dictionary is finished. David and the others learned more about using dictionaries by making their own. All the words in their dictionary are alphabetically arranged. 
Every word has a definition and a sentence using the word. Some words have pictures. And each page has guide words. The words and pictures in the dictionary help David remember the wonderful time he had in the city.